with you and share the news with you. Now, look, there was a big mass casualty event. I'm sure you're all aware of that. Uh, we want to keep those people in our prayers with that bridge collapsing. Um, you know, due to being hit by a ship, and I don't, you know, I don't know enough about that story. I've looked into it a little bit, but that's very odd. It's, I mean, honestly, that just doesn't happen. And it was like the ship hit that thing straight on. I have multiple questions surrounding that, and I don't really know what to think. I mean, is it a terrorist attack? Is it, uh, is the, I did see that the power was cut. You can see that on the ship as it's rolling down the big uh, cargo ship that the lights just go off. So the power goes off, starts losing control, then gets it fired up again. Power goes off again. Black smoke comes out, tries to take a hard right turn. Uh, you know, I've watched the videos. I've seen a little bit of analysis, but I don't really know what went on there. So it's not really uh, worth commenting on other than the fact that uh, there's a number of people who have lost their lives, people who are still missing. And uh, it is, uh, it's necessary for us to keep them in our prayers. It also will have a, a certain impact on the economy because that is one of the most important harbors. Uh, by the way, yeah, I saw uh, a scoop said it's blowing snow. Yeah, we're getting snowed on like mad. So in Min I live in Minnesota, northern Minnesota people. You want some weather news? We had no snow this winter. I, I'm not even kidding you. We had one early snowstorm. Um, we plowed that. Basically, we've been on dry grass. My son's in firefighting. And um, he's. they've got fires all the time. He's always on call until now because I'm looking out my window and it's still snowing. We're supposed to get like a foot of snow uh, over this storm, which is uh, three to four days long. So um, anyways, uh, I do know that the person piloting this ship uh, was Ukrainian. The ship is Chinese, I believe. And I mean, but none of that means anything until we figure out what's going on. So, uh, but uh, Father God, we just pray for the victims of that tragedy. Lord, we pray for their families. We pray for... Uh, yeah, all the people affected by this, Lord. We pray that you bring peace and comfort to their souls. We pray that if there was any nefarious doings, that, uh, Lord, that you would uh, expose that. And we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, um, again, please smash that like. Do chat in with where you're from. I'm excited to have you all on board. I uh, want to mention my sponsor, of course, uh, Midas Gold Group, MidasGoldGroup.com or text Lumberjack to 232425 to receive free silver with a qualifying order. You can also call them at 480-360-3000, mention me, and you will get that free silver with a qualifying order. Uh, my uh, my children's birthdays, uh, I gave them uh, each a, a one ounce piece of silver. Um, so kind of cool. They're really excited about it. And so those are things you can do as gifts as well, because most of what we give as gifts oftentimes are just kind of used and then maybe discarded, but you give something like that and they'll remember it and they'll keep it. And it's something that's going to increase in value over the course of their life. So especially for kids, it's a good way to teach them to value and, uh, start investing their money to understand what value is, what real money used to be, all of that. So uh, what real money still is, actually. So MidasGoldGroup.com, promo, or not promo code Lumberjack. That's my pillow. My pillow is promo code Lumberjack. Oh, I just mentioned Lumberjack. Kind of a promo code. You get free silver. Whatever. I'm off on a tangent here. I've got great news for you people. Okay, so um, the, there is, I've got some of the tump, Trump, Trump legal team's strategy. Um, oh, it's Singapore. Michelle says it was from Singapore. Somebody told me it's from China. Um, anyhow, but um, I, I, like I said, I don't know enough about it, so I'm not really going to be commenting too much on the Baltimore Bridge issue, other than to say that it's obviously odd and things seem odd, but uh, things like this are always odd because it's such a big story. Uh, but inside the Trump legal team strategy, they have a good strategy, folks. You're gonna some of these numbers are gonna be uh, just uh, amazing to you. And I also have maybe the best op-ed I've read in a little while. Okay, and it's really good. It's really good. In fact, maybe I'll start there because I want to have some fun. Okay, so let's do that. This out of the New York Post. Dem lawfare puts Trump through hell, but he hardly breaks a sweat. 
Years ago, Gary Larson published a cartoon showing a guy whistling as he cheerfully works in the bowels of hell. The devil is shown lamenting, you know, we're just not reaching that guy. There's a song by Rodney Atkins. If you're going through hell, keep on moving. Don't slow down. Uh, if you're scared, don't show it. You might get out before the devil even knows you're there. This reminds me of this. <laughs> the devil. You know, we're just not reaching that guy. So the punchline came to mind this week when an exuberant former president, Donald Trump, stepped before cameras to say, it will be my honor to post bond to appeal a massive decision against him in the New York court system. For most people, the $175 million bond is nothing to whistle away. But considering that Judge Arthur F. Engeron was insisting on $454 million and Attorney General Letitia James was thrilling New Yorkers with pledges to go after iconic Trump properties, the smaller amount was a clear win. Democrats lost their minds. One site announced, rich man's privilege prevails and blamed. Can you believe this? They're calling Trump privileged. <laughs> this is how far the left has lost their minds. That they think that when Donald Trump has his privilege as he gets persecuted by Letitia James, Arthur Engeron, Alvin Bragg, um, Fannie Willis, uh, you know, on and on, Jack Smith. I mean, we, we there's the names are endless, but somehow Trump is privileged. This is how whacked out these people are. Oh my gosh. And blamed undemocratic judges. Well, I think we can finally agree on something here. Uh, judge Arthur Engeron is definitely an undemocratic judge. Anyways. Oh, good to see you folks on. 820 beyond, 318 likes. Please smash that like and do chat in with where you're from. Utah is on the board. Sh Sean, out in Utah, I'm thinking of going elk hunting out there this year. Um... And be uh, curious to know if you elk hunt. Um, but anyways, moving along. Representative Alexandria, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Democrat New York, had previously warned that there is a risk in not seizing Trump's assets. The risk is political corruption. That's right. Which seemed a bit odd from a member who was under fire that same week for her blanket opposition to the investigation into the Biden corruption scandal, even declaring that racketeering is not an actual crime in America. Folks, that's a legal view. That should be good news for Trump in Georgia. <laughs> the risk is political corruption, okay? Oh my gosh, this stuff is nuts. The moment captured the strange universe in which we have found ourselves. Democratic prosecutors and politicians are piling on the fire and brimstone as Trump appears to be just warming up his campaign. The pile on prosecutors does not sit well with many voters outside of places like Manhattan. This is where they're losing it. These people just don't get it. We're all watching this in real time going, this is bull, okay? Um, the majority of America. And hey, look, P. Diddy, I've, I've looked into that more. You know, he's, he looks like he's pretty guilty. But again, how do they think that's going to play with black America? They're going to go after P. Diddy, but not Hunter Biden? They, I, this is not, they look like they're racist people. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying. Uh, they're racist, and then they go after Donald Trump. So then, uh, of course, uh, they would identify with Donald Trump, who is persecuted beyond the machine, like they are being in a sense, okay? And again, I'm not making any justification for P. Diddy, okay? It's just not. <clears throat> even those who do not like Trump have even a greater dislike for the weaponization of the legal system. The array of civil and criminal cases have Trump literally running from courthouse to courthouse, and Trump seems to be loving every minute of it. With every new indictment, Trump's popularity has increased. The lawfare is just not reaching the guy. He appears in his element. With every new indictment, with every new indictment, this increases. The reduction of the bond could prove to be a case of the courts protecting Democrats from themselves. 
<laughs> Pollsters have said that James' stated intervention intention to seize Trump properties might guarantee his victory in November. The over 60% reduction in bond now clears the way for a review of the grotesque judgment issued by Ingeron. In the meantime, he has already been reversed on two key points. Eric Trump and Donald Trump Jr., the company's executive vice presidents, will no longer be barred from serving in corporate leadership for several years. That was just on a threshold review. The appellate court can now review the underlying decision and hopefully inject an element of sanity back into the case after Engeron's flight of fancy on the bloated penalty. In the meantime, Alvin Bragg is now set uh, for a trial in April on his hush money case. New York Supreme Court Justice Juan Marchand has refused to dismiss or to delay a case that reeks of political bias. By the way, did you guys all know that Stormy Daniels stated openly, publicly that it never happened before now she says it did happen? Just saying. I don't know if you guys know that. Did you guys know that? Yes or no? That, did you guys know? She actually made a post. I think it was an Instagram or something years ago. And she said, uh, you know, with all these crazy rumors flying around, I just want you to know that this whole event never happened. <laughs> what? <laughs> but somehow she's got a case in New York with Alvin Bragg? What the? <laughs> so see, some people don't even know. And you guys follow me. So you guys are pretty up on conservative news and everything. But this is actually... I. Ah, oh, jeez. I, I, now I feel like I have to show people, but then I'm going to interrupt this flow. Um, let me just see here if I can find it for you quick. Um, by the way, did you guys see the uh, videos I released yesterday? Did you guys know that Letitia James has mortgage fraud? Yeah, Letitia James, mortgage, mortgage fraud, people. Did you guys know that? Like, got overvalued her property, undervalued her income. Did you guys know that one? I sh should I even do a video on this? I mean, I would think that, no, see, I, I mean, this is the thing. There's too much news to keep track of. No, it's not the Irish building crash bandit. It's not the Irish building at all. This is her own personal property. Her own personal property. Did you guys know this? All uh, Anybody who's fans of Tulsi Gabbard, let me show you this. Tulsi Gabbard Liberty score. You want her for a vice president candidate? Do you? Huh? 10% lifetime score, Liberty score. 7% session score, which means the most recent time she was in, she was in uh, Congress, that's when she had the lowest score. The average House Democrat is 1%. Oh, she's winning, folks. Man, that's winning, man. She's 700%. See, this is how you can use statistics to lie. Oh, yeah, man. She's 700% better than most Democrats. Yeah, but most Democrats are at 1%. I get so frustrated some days, people. <laughs> Let me see if I can find this for you. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here. I'll show you something else on, on the Trump properties. This, literally, this is the kind of nonsense that Apple has on their Apple news, right? Because they always want to give you from these great sources. Here it is. Untangling Trump's real estate. Donald Trump owes $454 million by Monday. This before it was reduced, okay? But experts say valuing the buildings would be a guessing game. Wait, wait, I thought that's what Trump's defense basically said. It was a guessing game. Uh, just, just saying. All right, back to the article, folks. I mean, I got to get, I, I got, look, we were already 14 minutes and I got to get to the, the legal strategy of Trump yet. So, New York Supreme, okay, ridiculous, which was, okay, rejected federal crime into a state, which bootstraps a rejected federal crime into a state offense. That's right. Bragg's case, he's talking about, it is based on a federal campaign finance violation that the Justice Department rejected and even Bragg expressed, expressed reservations about when he came into office. Now, this is one of the things, Alvin Bragg is actually an officer of the court. So, I, you know, I found this out over the last couple of years. I did not understand all this lawyering crap, you know, because I don't go to court. I don't want to go to court, you see. Um, but... 
Did you know that lawyers are actually considered officers of the court and they're supposed to be held to this legal standard and ethical standard where they don't pursue malicious prosecution? That's what can actually get them disbarred. So instead we see Trump's attorneys getting disbarred for looking into issues that appeared. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Alvin Bragg expressed reservations about this case when he came into office. And yet he just moves forward with it. However, in New York, standing on the law is a precarious spot, especially when others like James won an election on campaign pledges to beg Trump without even specifying a crime. Yeah, so in, in a few weeks, Democrats hope to turn up the heat to further get through to Trump. In Bragg's trial, which will prominently feature two star witnesses, disbarred loyal lawyer lawyer Michael Cohen and former porn star Stormy Daniels. By the way, did you see how the media is interviewing Stormy Daniels and trying to make her seem like a saint now? She's a porn star. <sighs> I my, and Michael Cohen runs around and does interviews, and they interview him like he's to be taken seriously. And he's a disbarred lying attorney. Does anybody see this stuff? I mean, I just let me let me ask you guys something. Just a yes no or in the chat. Would you borrow Michael Cohen? a hundred thousand dollars or stormy a hundred thousand dollars would you do it would you expect to get paid back would you feel like man these people are just gonna come through <laughs> yes yes or no i'm curious i i don't think that the i i don't care what these people have to say i don't i don't believe it cohen will appear just after another judge called him a perjurer who is continuing to game the system. Bragg is counting on a New York jury showing the same lack of interest in the underlying evidence as he has shown in the underlying law. Legally, these cases will say more about the integrity of the New York system than the law. I see little beyond politics and the question of whether the appellate courts will remain and regain a level of objectivity in reviewing their underlying theories. Indeed, the Trump case is more pr may prove more interesting in terms of physics rather than law. Physics professors have challenged students with the question of whether hell is exothermic, gives off heat, or endothermic, absorbs heat. Critics had hoped that these cases would give off so much heat that they torched any prospect of a Trump victory. Trump may soon prove that it is endothermic and that litigation hell is actually taking heat off him with many voters in the election. The shift in the polls over the last year is clearly found among voters who had previously rejected Trump. So far, at least, the expansion of the litigation hell seems to be leaving many voters cold. That may explain the whistling. Now, something else you need to consider. Do you remember back in 2020, well, 2016, when Trump won the election, uh, he outperformed the polls in the key swing states because, and I, I keep talking about this article, but... Um, the uh, Cambridge Analytica, which had predicted the Brexit, also predicted Trump's win because they had identified 3% of the population that would not admit they were voting for Trump. Now, Trump's most ardent supporters have now become more vocal. But here's what's interesting. All these lefties who are switching over to Trump, do you think that they're going to be vocal? This is, this is good analysis, people. This is the kind of stuff that people pay good money for. You get it for free here on Lumberjack Logic. Just saying, this is, this is yours. Free from me today, okay? So I think about these numbers. 3% of an identified Trump block from Cambridge Analytica that would not say they would vote for Donald Trump back in 2016. That's why he overperformed in the key swing states. That's why I bet money on him winning because I had read that piece and then saw where he spent his last days campaigning. But... Now we have a bunch of liberals switching over to Trump voters because Biden's just that bad. Do you think they're eager to tell their friends, neighbors, and relatives or pollsters that they're switching to Trump vote? 
So do you think that it, it might be more than 3% that haven't identified as Trump voters? I think it is. I think he actually stands to overperform the polls that are already overperforming for him on the key states. And he's going to need every single vote. Every single one. So you're going to have to drag everybody you can to the polls. Okay? Um, That's what's going on. All right. Now, here's where we get into Trump's legal team strategy. This one out of just the news, it says, an unreasonable bond in a victimless crime, question mark. Trump gears up to appeal the civil fraud ruling. Okay, so, you know, we talk, I'm going to just skip over the first part. There were no victims because the banks made a lot of money, Trump said in February, okay, which reported that Trump lawyer Christopher Kyes told Engeron in closing arguments, there's no real world impact, there's no fraud victims. He has echoed these statements since his trial late last year. One legal team, one legal expert with extensive prosecution experience agrees Others believe Trump's defense team will hone in on this argument as the case proceeds in the New York Appellate Court, provided he can pay the reduced bond. Now set at $175 million, which, of course, he paid in what? What's that word? Cash? Okay. You don't have to be a lawyer, just an average American citizen to understand this process seems unfair and unreasonable. David X. Sullivan, a trial lawyer and former assistant United States attorney for the District of Connecticut, told Just the News on Monday. And I want you to remember, one of my listeners made a great point of this yesterday on a live stream uh, with a super chat. He, so I, I saw his comment, but it's so true. The liberals created this mess because the reason Trump has extra money now is because of True Social. True Social was created because they banned him and other conservatives off Twitter. Otherwise, we wouldn't have True Social and Trump wouldn't have all that extra money. Okay. Judge Engeron issued a 92-page decision in a case with no victims and no financial loss to anyone, he said. I believe all parties benefited from the transaction, he added. In fact, Deutsche Bank, one of the supposed victims of Trump's alleged ill-gotten gains, has restrained from filing a lawsuit against the former president. Now, why would the bank not file a lawsuit, people? In addition to the facts that um, they're... um, I'm sorry, I, I just I saw something. I, I got a little distracted there for just a second. But um, in addition to the fact that Deutsche Bank actually benefited from the transaction, if they brought suit, it would bring ridiculous harm to their institution because nobody would want a bank with Deutsche Bank. Okay? Seriously. Why would anybody want a bank with a bank that goes after them when there's no victim? Okay. Um, Who was the judgment awarded to? As I said, there was no victim, Sullivan said. In November, now here's where it gets interesting. I want to bring it down to this one. So he makes the comparison to Sam Bankman Freed. Okay. But here's, I think, where they're really going to focus in. This is where Trump's defense team is really focusing. The now infamous Bernie Madoff was arrested in December of 2008 after he defrauded individual and institutional investors of billions of dollars. Ultimately, he pled guilty to fraud charges and was sentenced to 150 years in prison. In total, Madoff stole $20 billion in assets. By 2023, the Madoff Victim Fund had recovered about 91% of the victim's total losses, according to Forbes. The fund, which operates under the Justice Department, has paid out compensation to a total of 40,843 victims. It is unclear when Madoff's scheme began, however. Differing accounts indicate he began somewhere between 1960 and 1992. Madoff, widely recognized as one of the most notorious fraudsters of all time, was a signed how much was his bail, people? Anybody, I, I want to see. Take a guess. What was the size of Madoff's bail after he originally pled guilty to the multi-billion dollar Ponzi scheme? Okay. Anybody know? Yeah, $10 million. That's it. Even adjusted for inflation, the bond would be worth about $14 million in today's dollars. 
That's about 2% of the civil judgment and bond leveled against former President Trump. In further contrast, none of Trump's alleged victims have sued or brought forward complaints about the business arrangements, while the number of victims in Madoff's case is staggering. So we're looking at $10 million versus $454 million to be posted. Just basically, Trump has to post it like a bail so he can have... That's what they wanted, right? I mean, obviously, that all got changed. I understand that, but... They wanted him to post $454 million just to be able to appeal his case. Basically, because otherwise, you know, they're going to seize his assets and stuff. So they're going to show a selective prosecution defense, and they're going to hone in on this more and more. And one thing that lawyers do, really good lawyers, is they find what is the winning argument, and then they dig up more material on that argument, okay? Okay. Shalom from Brandon, South Dakota. Back at you, Gilbert. Okay. So then, people, this is how badly the left has screwed up the country. Out of issues and insights, the great divorce, 3.7 million Americans have fled counties that voted for Joe Biden. Look at this. So here's counties with the highest levels of net domestic migration in 2023. Positive domestic migration and negative. So I'm gonna give you both and listen to this. This is wild. Los Angeles County, California. In 2022, they were off 143,000. Now in 2023, they're off another 119,000 residents leaving Los Angeles County, California. Cook County, Illinois. 95,000, 58,000. Kings County, New York, 78,000, 55,000. Queens County, New York, 77,000, 50,000. Miami, Dade, Florida, 38,000, 47,000. So one thing you're going to notice is even in red states like Florida, and you're going to see this common trend, Miami, Dade, they're leaving Miami, Dade County, but Florida has some of the fastest growing counties. So they're leaving the blue counties even and going to the red counties, even in red states. Brocks County, New York, 61,000, 41,000. Orange County, California, 27,000, 35,000. Orange County used to be reliably red. They were a conservative district. Dallas County, Texas. So here you go. Take the most liberal parts of Texas, Dallas County, Texas. And we have 19,000 and 34,000 leaving. San Diego County, California, uh, 15,000, 30,000, Santa Clara County, California, 33,000, 29,000. So you are literally looking at, even just from a state perspective, there are only two counties in two conservative states, and they just moved to other conservative counties in the state. That's a mass exit of these blue states, blue cities. And listen to this, positive net migration, Polk County, Florida, 29,000, 26,000. Montgomery County, Texas, 22, 25. These are in thousands. I'm just going to read it faster. Pasco County, Florida, 24, 23. Collin County, Texas, uh, 30 and 20. Denton County, Texas, 23, 19. Williamson County, Texas, 20 and 17. Pino County, Arizona, 14, 17. Fort Bend County, Texas, 17, 15. Marion County, Florida, 13, 15. And Horry County, South Carolina, 17 and 15. All the 10 counties with positive net domestic migration in 2023 and 2022, the highest counties, all red. The ones where they're all leaving, all blue. So, because people, here's what you're going to hear in the news media. They're going to attribute it to, well, people are moving to the south. You know, they're retiring. Okay, give them that. Give them that. Say, yeah, they're moving. But what counties are they moving to? Blue or red? Because this is how the left tries to spin facts and statistics. Okay? Um, then we have the negative net domestic migration out of all these blue counties. And the other thing that you'll notice about these numbers is that the exits are bigger than the inflows. Okay, because the red counties are more vast, right? You don't have as large of a concentrated populace in these red counties. 
So we're spreading out while they're leaving these centralized blue counties. So that's what's interesting. Um, it's, it's just, as you notice, this is a trend due to the fact that, again, let me go back to this. Uh, this is all from the Census Bureau. And one of the things you'll find, too, about the Census Bureau is they lied in the last census. Okay? You're heading to New Hampshire, hippy dippy? I've got to go back out to New Hampshire in a couple weeks. I'm going to be doing some filming out there um, for an exciting project I want to tell you guys about, but I can't quite yet uh, until I, I get a little bit more prepared for that. Okay? So, um, but uh, I got sidetracked there by hippy dippy. Hippy. He sidetracked me. Now, where was I at? Oh, the census. They basically, they lied on the last census. The conservative districts should have seven more seats in the United States House of Representatives. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know that? I'm just curious. Um, anybody? Anybody know? I did. So they, they, we should have seven more seats based on the census. And so now what they're doing is trying to cheat the census by allowing the illegals in to get higher numbers in blue counties uh, by illegal immigration. Okay. So, which would then give them more seats because they cannot win uh, their, their seats based upon an actual election that it represented the will of the American people. That's what's going on. So, Anyways, I just want to get, I really want to get that news out on, on Trump and what was taking place there. Um, but uh, we'll let you all fly. I've got, I got some other stories I'm cooking on. I'll get some other videos out today. Please go check out my sponsor, MyPillow, too. By the way, I, if you guys don't know, if you haven't been watching the last couple of days, check this out. I got to show you something really cool. Um, I'll get, pull it up here for you. All right. So this is what's going on. So because you guys, in fact... Do you know what Mike Dell said the other day? Well, so I was talking with uh, the marketing gal whose office is right next to Mike. And she said, good night, Neil. I mean, your audience and what are you doing over there? Because your audience is so supportive. And that's what got us all these $25 deals. Okay, so now if you go to uh, mypillow.com forward slash lumberjack, you get all these. Okay, but she said, Mike's been talking about you all weekend. We need to get that lumberjack over here on our network. So he wants, uh, I, I don't know what that looks like, you know, for Frank's speech and whatnot. But um, the bottom line is you're getting special deals because of your great, uh, you know, help uh, that you, the support that you have shown. You know, the per kale sheets, there's still the phenomenal deal on the per kale sheets. Okay. Um, there's still uh, the deals on the, uh, uh, the sheets now are down and they're $49.98. We had that $39.98 deal for just a little while, but, uh, still a phenomenal deal at $49.98 for a king size, king sized sheet set. <laughs> I'm really struggling with my speech today. Um, but, uh, the, the premium, uh, Giza pillows, by the way, I see a super chat. I got to get to here. I want to bring that up. I'm just thumbing back through my phone here. We have Terry Edwards, um, uh, there's definitely a tell-all. The Democrats are really trying hard to divide us and make sure they can cheat again. They, you know, division is the game. It's the name of the game for these people. But anyways, if you go to MyPillow.com forward slash Lumberjack, all those deals are there. The dog beds, everything. You pull it up, and these are the kind of deals that we're getting with that promo code right now. So, um, yeah. Oh, thanks, Shelly. Yeah, well, right now is the time to do it. I don't know how long that deal is going to last on the $25 stuff. So if you're set to order some stuff from my pillow, I'd go get it now because these are some of the best deals I've ever seen. The six-piece towel set for 25 bucks. Those are the best towels known to man. I mean, I just love his product. I mean, the guy has good stuff. He's got the, the dish towels now too. I don't know. I need to get some of those. I've got so much of his stuff, but I need to get some more. And then the My Coffee right now. Uh, you can get that on the my store, but that's on my page too. And it'll just click you over there. Use promo code lumberjack. I love his coffee. Guys just got good stuff. I mean, he just does. Anyways, keep fighting the good fight people. Okay. All right. Love y'all. Peace out.